Anyway, I'm here to tell all of you web freaks and digital strategists and tech geniuses the thrilling story of how I started a Facebook page. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a bit about gender equality, a bit about social media, about crowdsourcing and all those things that you know a lot about. And it all ends up in uh, success, I'd say, and I hope you can find some inspiration in it. First, a bit about me. Uh, as I was presented, I'm a PR consultant, have, have been for 17 years. I work with a pop star called Robin, and I work with ad agencies and with books and films, etc. When I was seven years old, might be eight, something like that, I got my hands on that collector's card in my older brother's room. It was super, super cool, and it may, gave me goosebumps, because when I looked at it, I said, oh my god, this is me. I took it to school, I gave it to my school teacher, and she said, oh, look at this, everyone. This says that girls are in one way and boys are in another. And that is something that has never worked for me. When she said that, I said, no, I'm not. I love wearing dresses, I love building stuff. I'm the strongest in this class, but I also have yellow hair and braids. What is all this about girls being one way, boys another way? And we all know that, the stereotypes being reproduced in media all the time, and everyone saying, that's just the way it is. Well, that isn't the way it has to be. And one thing that has sort of stuck with me since those days is um, the trick of counting. And I'm going to, this is, here comes a perfect Instagram moment for all of you guys who has a uh, phone. When we talk about gender equality, people very often confuse it with opinions. You hear people say, I think we are a gender equal country, or here in this workplace, I believe we are, I feel we are. Gender equality is not a matter of opinion. Gender equality is a matter of knowledge and facts. When it comes to salary, when it comes to who does what, all of these things can be measured and are measured. That is how you find out if some a collection of people, if it's gender equal or not. In Sweden, some magazines have a tendency to do these polls. Do you think that Sweden is an equal country? And then they do this front page is saying, seven out of 10 people think Sweden is a gender equal country. But no, that does not measure whether we are a gender equal country or not. It measures our lack of knowledge. Seven out of 10 people do not know the facts. Uh, back to the story about when I started a Facebook page. Three years ago, or it might be even be three years and six months ago, I was at a gala. Uh, I was sitting like you guys in this audience, and I was counting. Counting is a great way of gathering knowledge and facts. It doesn't say everything, but it says a lot. And I've been doing that for a few months during this gala season where everyone's awarded the best theater, best film, best whatever, counting everyone on stage. The comedian, the conferencier, the connoisseurs, the in-between band, the flower givers, etc. I counted on Twitter, and at this gala, eh, at the final of this gala, I, ha I ended up at like 51-8. 51, 51 men, 8 women. After the gala, the producer came up to me and said, Lena, you are such a pain in the ass. Didn't you like the gala? I said, oh, I didn't say anything, whether I liked it or not. I was just counting. And he said, but you know I'm not like that. There's this view on people who are like that and who aren't like that. And if you aren't like that, you could do whatever, because you still aren't like that. And, um, and also another thing that you need to remember when it comes to gender equality is that it, raising a problem, it often feels like you're the one creating the problem. We had no problem before you came in here and started counting, started pointing, started etc. Stop creating problems. Uh, and then he said, you know what, Linda, we actually had a woman, and she was a writer, and she was also from Japan, so it checked two boxes, but she got sick. There's always that excuse. And I just quick jump into more of these facts. 76% of all people in news media today are men. 76% of all people in news media all over the world today are men. When it comes to experts, 80% of all people in news media today are men. Yes, that hurts. In Sweden, you would say, 
oh, the world's most gender equal country, which we are not. I think we're in like place four or something. Seven out of ten in the biggest daily, the stories about them, the pictures of them, the quotes of them, are men. Aidan White, his, I, I'd say if, to simplify it, he was the head of all the journalists in the world, International Federation of Journalism, when he saw this report, which you can find on whomakesthenews.org. When he saw these numbers, he said, oh my God, we're failing to portray fairly half of the world's population. And I would say, no, Aidan, you are failing to portray 100% of the world's population. We do not consist of 70%, 76% men. And is this a problem, one might say? Is it really a problem that 80% of the experts are men? Of course it is. It's a huge democracy problem. If media today is supposed to show us the world, have people's opinions and views about how the world should be uh, governed, etc., those views and opinions need to be ours, not 50% of us. And when it comes to other minorities, like the names you have trouble pronouncing, journalists have a huge problem calling them too, which also affects us. When we need to go to the polls and vote for the government next year, we need to know who lives in this country. And the question is why? Why is it like this? Aiden, all the journalists, no one wants it like this. I surely don't, you don't, I assume. We want media to portray the world as it is, us as we are. Why then isn't, aren't they doing it? I'd say because of this. The stereotypes, who should be doing what? And the excuses, they're, all, they're often like, couldn't find any, she was sick, etc. We wanted them but we couldn't find them. And that's exactly what the gala producer told me after the gala when I was a pain in the ass by counting. We couldn't find them. And I said, hey, can I help? Next year before the gala, let me sit with your working group for two weeks or so, totally free. And whenever you find a comedian, a conferencier, a rock band, a theater connoisseur, a wino, etc., I can find ten of them who are not male, who's skin perhaps aren't pink, like mine. I'll find you ten others. Totally free, what do you say, what do you say? And he was super, super frustrated. He went away, <laughs> and he came back after 15 minutes or so with a bottle of champagne. And he said, great, Lina, let's do this. And something happened. By cooperating, perhaps we could help each other, perhaps we could create something, create change. I drank that bottle of champagne, and I moved on to a nightclub downtown in Stockholm, and I asked the nightclub owner, how come I have never seen a woman DJ here? And he said, we had a woman last year in December. She okay. But uh, the program for the next upcoming month? Well, you know, we want women, but we can't find them. Okay, I said, with a bottle of champagne in me, and I said, okay, I'll help you. 100 women DJs. I'll find them for you. Monday morning at 12 o'clock, I'll send you a list of 100 women who are DJs. And he said, yay, great, thank you. Woo, we high-fived and I went home and I woke up the next morning and I panicked. How was I supposed to solve this? And as I was presented, I, I've been working with MySpace for several years. I've been onto all the social media platforms for ages. And I know people can create amazing stuff on the web together. So, this is another Instagram moment. I remembered this, one of my favorite pictures. And I was like, hey, we can do this together. What if I organized this champagne information transaction? So I started the Facebook page. I named it Rättvisa Förmedling, which in English would translate into like uh, the agency for justice, but also in Sweden the word is more fun because it's also the word for like showing right, showing the way, and also in showing right as in representation. Facebook page, hi, we're Rättvisa Förmedlingen will help you find, other than men, for your interviews, your panels, your uh, expertise shows, your DJ booths, your history books, and will help you find other than women that can talk about fostering kids or uh, taking care of older people and how, how it is to be a parent. We'll help you find uh, people with another heritage than Swedish to talk about other things than their exotic heritage, perhaps their competence. It's totally free, welcome and I pushed uh, some kind of publish button, and I went to grab a cup of tea, and I came back and 200 people had joined. 
200 people said, yay, that's fantastic, Woo, let's go. And I posted the first of what is now almost 600 searches. I said, let's help all the nightclubs in Sweden find DJs who aren't men, because they really want them, but they can't find them. And one said, Sissy Moon, one of our greatest house DJs. DJ Marine Baroon is fantastic at reggae music. I even posted my own name there. I'd been a DJ for seven years, even winning competitions. So I sort of squeezed my own name in there. Next morning, 10 o'clock, I could send 140 names of DJs who aren't men. You could give this uh, list an applaud. And you're, you're, you're saying, you're not applauding me now, you're applauding about 5,000 people who by then had gathered this group. And I'm just saying a few things here. These DJs are not better, better than the ones with a penis. But they're no worse. And by them never ever being vis visible as DJs, we're sort of uh, insinuating that they're worse. And this list was a huge help for all the nightclubs in Sweden. Yay, a list of DJs that we can book together with all the others to make the nightlife better. Hey, super cool and free. They do exist and help helps. That's cool. And we've been doing the exact same thing now for three and a half years. We have the Facebook page. We have someone who needs help. We write a search looking for experts in terrorism who aren't men or looking for magicians who aren't men in suits sawing women in bikinis in two halves. Or perhaps we're searching for parents who aren't women to talk about how to dress their kids when it gets cold. And anyone can add names. They can participate, they can add themselves, their mother, their sister, their brother, someone they saw somewhere. And that list is a huge pile of information. Something extremely, extremely valuable to journalists, to the one arranging seminars like this. And all of a sudden they can have a seminar like this with not only tech guys on stage, with tech women, tech girls. And all of a sudden it's a conference about tech without you having to uh, measure or count what's in between a person's leg, legs. And another thing uh, that's really cool is why, when we do these searches, we often say like, who aren't men? Uh, women in media, as you, as you saw, underrepresented. But by saying someone who are, isn't a man or someone isn't a woman, all of these other discrimination grounds are sort of added into it. Because when you look at the lists, you've got people from all over the world with all the different skin tones, all different backgrounds, all different uh, ways into the subject. We collect all the names onto a, a website. It's, it was totally free. It's a Word page. No, a WordPress page. And uh, we want them saved there because no one should ever, ever again be able to say that it looks like this because the experts on whatever don't exist. Well, they do. And they're spreadable, the lists. Anyone could add names, send them away, say, hey, funny you should say in that magazine that your panel looks like this because there aren't any women who's experts on politics in Poland because here's a list of 240. Please use this, this one na next time. We found web experts. We found mathematicians for universities, experts, professors. We found football fan, fans, hardcore football, film photographers, boxing experts, and the media loves us. They really, really love us. And why is that? Actually, I've, I've been one of the questions in this huge TV show, and he did not know the answer <laughs> at all. But how come they've given us this much space? I mean, it's a Facebook page. My grandma could do that in two seconds. How come they're so interested in what we do? Because it's helping. It's totally free. It's super easy. It's there. It's exactly where people are. And it's also, by being where people are, we can change the way people think. When in the feed, all of a sudden, this search goes up, helping a children's TV show find a magician who's not a man. Do you know any? We're sort of questioning the idea that, that, that a magi magician has to be a man. And people get to think, which is like the biggest reason for change in this world, getting people to think. And of course, it's working. No one could ever again in Swedish media pretend or say that there weren't any others because they exist. And we've done, as I said, almost 600 searches. Not once 
have we failed to fi find people? And a network of 45,000 people, now we're up to 50,000, 45,000 people within their closest friend groups on Facebook, we can reach 9 million people. Uh, we don't only, only uh, help media. Here's a list of board people, people who are, have a great competence for sitting in board, boards. In Sweden, there's, that's been a huge debate. There aren't enough women with board competence, experience with sitting in boards, being on boards. We found 1,000 names for them, people with experience of sitting in boards that are super eager to be there. Here's two of Sweden's most famous DJs promoting that list. And here's our Minister for Gender Equality wearing a bag with our logo. And here's King, the Swedish King. I had to have dinner with him. I say had to have dinner with him. Well, I wasn't really eager to do that. The results. 559 searches last week, 9,961 names collected by now. They're totally open and free on the web page. You can add names, you could add your own name, you could add others. You could, you could find their contact details if you want to. We've got 51,193 ambassadors encouraging and helping the ones with power to do a better job. And the most important, there are no more excuses. There are several reasons why people won't take that extra step to change the way it is. We can be scared. We might even think that gender equality and representation is important. But you can no longer say it's because they don't exist. 50,000 people will prove you wrong. And one might think these lists are super cool. Uh, perhaps media will interview one woman or another man or someone with darker skin every other day, but is it really making a change? I had one of those dips. Uh, I, this is a non-profit project and anyone working with those things know that every now and then you get really, really tired. And especially working with gender equality issues and trying to make the world a better place. One time, I think it was the same night, I, w I walked into McDonald's and I bought myself a hamburger. 10 Swedish kroner. It was all I had. My mom had to help me with the rent because this was a full-time job only after like two, two or three weeks. I bought the hamburger and I went out of the door and one of, my, uh, like one of the people I passed was like, oh, that wasn't really fair, was it? As, it? as in saying fair, fair agency, buying hamburgers at this huge American company would somehow not be 100% good. And by trying to do something good, you should be doing everything right, being good at everything. I have people asking me if I uh, really take that long showers, so what about the water? Those things you also have to conquer when you want to change something. And I'm not doing it because it's good, I'm doing it because it's right. Because it makes my existence easier. One of those days, I had a, had a hard time, and I went home to my brother, and here's his two kids, Malan and Elvin, she was seven, he was nine. We were watching a children's show called Folkoteket, where kids follow grown-ups to work. And the grown-ups show them how the works work, and this day they followed a nurse and a helicopter pilot to work. The nurse was a man called Per Olof, with a mustache and kind of round. The woman was a helicopter pilot called Elisabeth, found through our network. And when the helicopter pilot Elisabeth turns on the helicopter, Malla, seven years old, jumps up in the couch and says, Hey, I'm gonna fly! And yes, you can change the world. And by that, I want to stop and answer your questions in a while. Thank you.